All right, so another OTL video. I guess that's just how it is right now. I did a video last week on my thoughts on the OTL and what we knew back then. You can go watch that if you haven't. But for this video, I just want to quickly talk about where we are now, what's going on with Wizard's statement before the weekend, and also where I think this is sort of leading. But first off, let's address the elephant in the room, and that's obviously the statement that Wizards put out before the weekend. I've seen a lot of people be optimistic about that message. I was also maybe initially optimistic when I read it. I was like, okay, they're giving us some concessions here. Then I read it again, and my opinion sort of changed because I was reading between the lines and thinking to myself, what are they really saying here? Because that sort of statement from them doesn't really say a whole lot. It seems most of all like damage control after people started canceling their D&D Beyond subscriptions. I've canceled mine as well. Uh, and it seems that that got their attention and forced them to really make a statement and maybe pull back some of the other statements they had prepared. So for the statement, without again diving too deep into it, they're telling us that there will be some changes to the royalty thing. It doesn't really say there's not gonna be royalties. It's just saying that they're not gonna maybe, no royalty structure is the words they used. Uh, so that could mean what's still a flat royalty. I don't know. They were also decently clear on the fact that they're not, or the new OGL is gonna include some language. So it's not like they can just steal your content. But it wasn't, for me at least, entirely clear uh, how that would look. So before we get the actual legal wording for that, it's hard to know if that's really the case because they also went ahead and said in the OGLs we had leaked that they were not gonna be able to steal your content and then right below that saying, we can steal your content if you want. So again, how much can we trust them on that? And then they're sort of kind of trying to say that VTT is not impacted, but they're not really saying that. They're just saying that VTT, like what are they really saying? They're not saying that VTTs are safe as far as I'm reading it. They're maybe saying that you can still put your content on a VTT or something like that. Not entirely sure about that either. What we did get straight, and I appreciate that at least was that they are not trying to go after our content that has already been published. Now, I never thought that they would, but uh, there were some people that were very worried about that. And that would obviously have just bankrupted us uh, in a day if we had to pull out, pull down all our old projects. Um, so that's obviously a good thing that they're setting the record straight on that. And I felt that they were pretty clear on that. Most notably, the statement that they put out didn't tell us that they couldn't change the contract at will which I'm led to believe that they are still trying to get that language in there, which means that any other change they're really making is, uh, well, doesn't mean anything because then they can just put in language that says, we can change this agreement in 30 days, like they tried to do before, and they can go ahead, no royalties, no nothing. And then along the way, just slowly, bit by bit, change the contract until it's the contract that they want. And they know that the out outrage is not gonna be as heavy, especially not if people are already signed onto that contract because that very much limits their options and how they can protest or what they can do about what Wizards of the Coast is doing. And as for the other point, they didn't also say that they're not gonna deauthorize the old OGL. So, that again is a deal breaker for me because that means to produce content under an OGL, I would have to sign on to, well, the new OGL. And if I don't want to do that, well, then I'm left behind. So, um, so yeah, that's my opinion. We didn't get a whole lot of out of that statement. I don't think we, we won anything. And that's the final point I want to make about the statement because I've seen a lot of people, Legal Eagle had it in his video. I saw it in other videos from creators outside of the community where they're saying that it seems that Wizards of the Coast have given us some concessions and maybe fans will stop being angry. And I've also seen fans, like we, we did an update on Kickstarter yesterday and people were like, well, did you see the update? Uh, they're, they're sort of pulling back and uh, we're winning and they're not gonna do that. And that's scary because I did, as I just explained, I don't think we've won really anything. I don't think they've promised us really anything. I think. At most, we've won the battle, a minor battle. We've uh, gotten them to withdraw from the battlefield for a moment. We've gotten them to regroup, but they are regrouping. We haven't won the war, uh, so to speak. I hate the thought of being at war with the company that I'm sort of uh, coexisting with, uh, but that seems to be what they're thinking of it as. And um, we, had, we definitely haven't won the war. They are not abandoning the OGL, and I'll talk a bit about that in a minute. Uh, I don't believe that they are anyway. I think they're just pausing for now, trying to get the outreach down, trying to get people to stop canceling subscriptions. And 
then we'll see where it goes from there. Most likely, uh, they'll come up with some changes and do stuff gradually. So the sentence we have in there that people really harp upon where they're saying, people are going to say that we won and they'll only be half right because you won and but we also won stuff like that uh, which was a really awkward and stupid sentence i think that's a very uh, devious ploy of uh, misdirection here where they're, they're trying to get us to think oh we won they believe that we won um and then debate whether or not they won also that's not the point we haven't won there's nothing won here we shouldn't focus on the fact that they believe that we will believe that we've won because that's trying to put it into our heads that the battle is over, we've won, we don't have to be angry anymore, we still have to be on this. We still have to stay in this track. Now I'm not saying that every Reddit post in the DD Next subreddit has to be about the OTL, nobody wants that. We also want to talk about a hobby and I want to make videos about other stuff, so of course we don't have to spend all our attention and time on this, but we can't let up. We can't let them think that it's over now, we can't stop for example, the D&D cancellations, D&D Beyond cancellations, I'm not going back and subscribing to D&D Beyond tomorrow because we have to let them know that until they give us something that is crystal clear, a timeline, some real legal language for this stuff, we haven't won anything and we know that we haven't won anything and they shouldn't believe that we've won anything at all. So the last thing I want to talk about just for a bit is where does this leave us now with Wizard Statement and all of this public pressure that's coming out, but also I think some of the deflation we're going to see in the coming week uh, where people are maybe going to be less interested uh, in what's going on with the OGL because quite naturally we just tire of talking about the same thing and the same thing again and again. In my opinion, and I think this is probably almost certain at this point. Wizards of the Coast's plan is to build D&D Beyond as a digital ecosystem for everything Dungeons & Dragons. They're going to have a VTT on there, you're going to be able to publish third-party products on there, and that's going to be under their license. They're going to take a royalty cut just like DM's Guild functions now, and they want play to go through D&D Beyond as much as possible so they can have microtransactions and they can have subscription costs. One thing that I've seen floating around out there, and this may be true, we'll see, is that Wizards of the Coast is actually going to dial back or completely drop physical books in favor of keeping everything digital. And the reason for this, of course, is again that it's very much easier to put digital stuff under a subscription. The OGL is so important to them, this new OGL, because they want to ensure that one D&D or whatever they're going to call it is going to be exclusive is exclusively their content. They're not going to give a cut out to other companies at the small shops uh, that, that sell D&D products and other hobby products. And they want to cut out all of those middlemen. They want to keep the revenue for themselves. I think this is pretty clear at this point that this is the plan. And that's also why I don't see them abandoning the OGL battle. I don't see them giving up. I don't see any real concessions. So what I think they're going to do now is they're going to sit on this for a bit. They may come out with a statement more this week, setting up a timeline and maybe even releasing some stuff, uh, some OGL draft, I don't know. Um, but otherwise, we're going to see them hold off for a bit. They're going to sort of dial it down a bit, but they're still going to keep probably uh, the parts about them deauthorizing the old OGL unless we can convince them that that won't be possible. And I don't think it will be possible, but I think they're not willing to accept that fact yet. I think they still believe that they can deauthorize the old OGL and I think they're still going to try to do so. Uh, the other thing is they're still going to keep in, keep in provisions that they can change or update the contract as they go because once one D&D rolls around and D&D Beyond is ready with the VTT and the subscription tiers and the new books and all that, they're going to want you to sign something where if you want to publish in that space, you need uh, to pay them royalties, you, you're locked in to the environment um, and all that stuff that was in the original contract or most of the stuff that was in the original contract, they want to want that language in there when they sort of wall off their garden and funnel everything and everyone into D&D Beyond. So where does this leave publishers? Well, I was always of the mind that if they created some environment, which I believe they would do for several years, so that's not really a surprise that they want to do that. The surprise is that they're trying to kill the old OGL. Um, as long as the terms of whatever contract I'm signing aren't too draconian, I'll sign it. I've published on the DMs Guild and written, signed away my rights to content, and I'm not doing that that much anymore because I hate not having rights to my content. But there is some stuff like the guides we are creating and other stuff that would just be very, very difficult, if not impossible, to create without access to the OGL and the environment. 
So if I want to create content like that and the terms are good enough that I'll sign them and the royalty share isn't too egregious and there's a market for it, I'll, I would publish, I would have published on D&D Beyond uh, and for one D&D. Now, mm, trust has been broken. It's, um, it's less appealing. Uh, I would have a harder time bending the knee and signing on to those terms, especially if those terms said that then I can never again publish without that license. Obviously, I wouldn't do that. Then I would rather publish outside their ecosystem entirely. If I had to choose between their ecosystem or outside, I would choose outside. And I also think that the things we're seeing from Pathfinder, uh, Paizo and, uh, and others of creating their own OGL-like licenses is a very good thing. I think it uh, gives us more opportunities in the space to create and produce and publish. Um, so whether or not I'm going to end up using those licenses will have to depend on what's the content, what are the rules that I can reference, how is the support for it. Um, but I think it's a good thing, nonetheless. Uh, in any way we can combat what Wizards of Coast are doing with this, I think that's a good thing. As for the consumers, the DMs, the players, which I'm also part of, I'm also a player, and oh, the, I'm not a player, I'm a DM uh, for Dungeons & Dragons. I purchase books, I do all this stuff. Where does that leave us? But I think that if Wizards of the Coast really succeed with their walled garden approach, especially if they're going to try to all digitalize stuff, I think it's just going to be not as great a game. Uh, I wish they would make these things optional and just build it to be fucking amazing. Just make it great. Make it such an awesome platform that people are going to want to use it. And then everyone who doesn't want to do that can do what they have always done, but still with Dungeons and Dragons. Because those people are not, you're not going to get the old Grognards or some of the people in my player group to go all digital. You're not going to do it because they don't want to do it. They're, they're not, they're never going to get there. So if you're forcing them to do that, you're just going to lose them. And some of these people are the biggest proponents of tabletop role game, playing games out there. So yeah, I think that we need to continue to stay in this track. We need to continue the battle, the fight, the war. It's not over yet. Wizards uh, haven't won, but neither have we. Uh, I don't think there's any winners here. I think that Overall, as a community, uh, we've lost. If there's any silver lining, it is that we're going to get maybe more diversity in the games that we play. We're going to see some new RPGs, uh, tabletop role-playing game systems spring up, and some of them may be really, really great. And mm -hmm. maybe we've uh, shown Wizards of the Coast that we have power, so we need to lock down on that, continue demonstrating that we have powers as consumers, players, as people who love this game and this community. So yeah, that's my five cents on the situation. I hope that you've had a great weekend. And beyond that, there's not a whole lot left to say, except thank you so much for watching, and I hope that I'll see you in the next video.